What's up you guys, it's Cody. In this video, I wanna talk a little bit about how to choose a real estate brokerage. Now, whether you're just getting into the business of real estate or you've already been in for a while and you're considering making a brokerage change, I wanna talk a little bit about the mindset that goes into uh, the thinking process of how to choose a brokerage that is right for you. We're gonna be talking about how to weigh pros and cons of each different brokerage and basically go through a process of elimination to figure out which one is the best thing for you. Now, obviously when it comes to being a real estate agent, the thing that you have to really really think about is what am I going to get out of this, right? What is the purpose of a real estate brokerage? So that's what we're going to discuss here. First off, I want to talk about three things to consider when choosing a new brokerage. First up, you really need to consider what is most important for you in a real estate brokerage. Now, if you're just getting started, you might really value having training and having coaching and having the people around you who know the business and can guide you along that right path to be able to give you the education that you need to get started in this business. If you've already been in the business for a while, maybe you don't really value that as much and maybe you're just looking to keep more of your commission or have a longer growth opportunity with that particular company. So this is the very first thing, thing I have to give people advice on is, hey, figure out what's important to you. Are you looking for training? Are you looking for education? Are you looking to keep the most money? Are you looking for leads? What are you looking for when it comes to choosing a real estate brokerage? This is going to be a relationship where you go into choosing a brokerage and say, look, I'm going to provide the brokerage with some uh, value by bringing them deals and helping to close transactions with this company. And in return, I need something from them. I either need leads, I need education, I need a mentor, I need something from them in return. The second thing you have to consider is how much are you going to get paid? for being at that particular brokerage. Now, obviously, when you go and work with a brokerage, in most cases, you're gonna have a split and a cap. This means that you're gonna pay the brokerage a certain commission on each deal that you close. This could be anywhere from 500 bucks. It could be 10%, 20%, 30%. I've even seen as high as 50 to 70%, depending on where the deal actually came from. So you're gonna pay them some portion of that commission, and then you're also gonna have a cap, which means that after you pay them a certain amount, you then cap out and you get to keep the rest of that commission. Now, again, going back to kind of number one, what do you value with this, right? If you're just getting started, you might be willing to pay for that because you're going to get a lot more resources and education in return. You may be getting deals handed to you. You may be getting education on a daily basis. You may be getting all of these things that makes that make that make sense for giving up, you know, 50% of your commission on each deal that you close. In other cases, you may say, look, I've been in the business for a while. I already know what I'm doing. I don't need help. I don't need all the education. I just need to be able to close deals and keep as much of that commission as possible. Well, in this case, you might be saying, you know, I really want a place where I can keep more of that commission. So the thing you have to really think about is uh, not only how much are you going to keep of that commission, but what opportunities is the real estate brokerage giving you uh, in return for being an agent there at their company? Every single brokerage is going to have something different to offer. So this is what you really need to figure out what those opportunities are. When considering these facts, I always factor in how many deals am I going to close by being at that brokerage as opposed to a different one. Think about it this way. Do you either want half of the watermelon or do you want the whole grape? In some cases, you may go to a brokerage where they're giving you deals, they're giving you transactions, and yeah, you might be giving away 50% back to the brokerage, but if you're closing more deals, you're gonna get half of that overall watermelon. Then you might get to a spot where you say, hey, I'm gonna go out on my own, I'm gonna take that whole transaction, I'm gonna keep everything of it, and I'm getting that whole grape if you will. And that grape might grow into an apple and that apple might grow into a grapefruit and maybe into a, a melon, right? And so you try to grow that after you've got into after you've been in the business for a while and you try to take on more of that commission. So when you really look at your overall career and figure out where you're at, if you're in the beginning, you might be saying, yeah, you know, I'd rather take a smaller piece of a big pie. And then as you tr progress through your uh, career, you might get to the point where you say, look, I want to go out on my own. I don't need to be giving away all this stuff. I'm bringing in my own business. I'm going to take the full portion of that grape, that apple, or that melon. Now, I know that that fruit analogy was pretty awesome, but I don't want you to get hung up on that. Let's move on to the third thing you have to consider when choosing a brokerage. I want you to think about the brand recognition and how important that is for you as an agent. Right now, honestly, I would say that the brand recognition really only matters if you're in the luxury space. If you're selling luxury real estate, then yes, I would argue that it does make a difference if you're with a company like Sotheby's International or Berkshire Hathaway or some of these other big brokerages in these different areas. If you're with a well-known luxury 
luxury brokerage, that's going to go a long way in helping you to list more luxury properties, but also help buyers purchase those luxury properties. If you're not working in that luxury space, you're just kind of selling your average day-to-day -day homes, then honestly, the brand recognition, in my opinion, doesn't really matter all that much, but it may matter to you. So figure out what, uh, how important that is for you to have that brand recognition. And if it's important, then you might want to consider one of those high-end brands. If it's not important, then that kind of opens up some other opportunities for a company that is probably going to end up paying you more or giving you more long-term growth opportunities within the brokerage. Now, as you go through this, just keep in mind that things are going to change. You're gonna be in a different position in your career, and as time passes, you're gonna value different things. As you're just getting started, you're gonna say, look, I need the education, I need the mentorship, I need the relationships. That's the thing that you're really gonna value, and you won't value the money may maybe necessarily as much, right? You still wanna get paid, you still wanna get that money, but of course, you're gonna value uh, getting into the business and staying in the business first. After you kind of get all that education and you know how to list properties and how to sell them, how to do contracts, all of that, then you're going to make the transition and things will change and you'll say, okay, now it's really about maximizing how much I make. And, you know, honestly, for probably most of us working less or at least earning more if we're going to be working more, right? So that's the thing that you have to kind of keep in mind is that, look, things are going to change as you go um, through your career and that's okay. You're going to make changes. You're going to want to work with new people, new companies, uh, new opportunities, stuff's going to come up and uh, you might just need a change. Now to highlight with you how things will change and how you'll value different things over time, I wanna share with you my own personal journey and why I decided to join certain brokerages and then later leave them. Like it says in the title, I've been with over six different brokerages, I've tried many of them out, and I've finally landed on one that I'm going to stick with for the long run here. So with that said, let's jump into the very first brokerage that I joined, and I'll tell you a little bit about why I joined it and then why I left. Now I'm gonna keep this a little bit short because I don't wanna bore you with my whole story here, right? This is about you and you try choosing a brokerage that's right for you. I just want to give you some additional context and some things to consider. So Century 21 was the very first brokerage that I joined. When I got into the real estate business, I said uh, to a couple people I knew, I said, hey, I'm getting into the business. You're already in real estate. What do I do? What should I do? Who should I talk to? What you know? What advice would you give me as, um, as I'm just getting started? All of them said, look, go join a team, find a top producing team, join them, learn from them, get leads, and you're going to start closing business. Man, I'm so glad I did this because when I first got in the business, I had no idea what I was doing. And if I wasn't on that team, I would not have been in this business to this day. I would have dropped out because man, this business can be really tough. So I'm really glad I joined that team personally. But after about a year or so, I got a call from another colleague or a, a coworker, I guess you'd say another agent basically who I knew before I had gotten into the business. He said, Hey, Cody, I know you've been in the business for about a year now. I've got an opportunity on my team to come work with uh, new construction. Is this something you're interested in? I thought about it and I said, you know what? Yeah, yeah, I would. I would love to come and sell new construction and um, you know learn this side of the business, work for the builder, and see what that's all about. And I figured, worst case, I could always go back to Century 21 where I was at. So I made that move from Century 21 over to selling new construction with Berkshire Hathaway. Now, this was a higher-end brokerage. There was a lot of luxury agents with the company, but for me specifically, I was on another team selling new construction. I was here for about nine months trying to figure out how to sell new construction, and I did see some success with the new construction, but unfortunately, I really realized, look, new construction is a long-term game. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to be able to sell homes. And often you, you know, you do the work today and you don't get paid for 12 months or so. So I made the decision after about nine months, I, I finally had figured out a little bit of my own business. I was still selling my own real estate on the side. I figured out, Hey, I can actually still sell real estate and be on my own and be able to support myself and pay my bills and do all that. So I uh, eventually ended up leaving Berkshire Hathaway and made the move over to Keller Williams. The reason why I made the decision to move to Keller Williams at the time was because I wanted to grow a real estate team. And at the time, there was no better option than Keller Williams. Keller Williams was known for growing and supporting teams and kind of going down that route. So I said, hey, I want to join Keller Williams. I get that sense of community and I can finally start to build a team. Well, I was there for a little bit. I tried the team route. I hired an assistant. I had up to two buyer's agents at the time. And I was there for, again, about a year or so. After a year at Keller Williams, I made the move over to eXp Realty. Now, obviously when I made the move to eXp, I thought, hey, everything's going virtual. They've got these other opportunities with stock options. They've got revenue share. They've got all these other opportunities for me to earn a little bit more. I'm going out on my own. I can continue to grow this team. This is gonna be the right move for me. So I did, I made that move over to eXp. I was only there for about nine months and then decided to make a move again away from eXp over to a flat fee brokerage. I made the move away from eXp because 
because I was just in a spot where I just needed to change. I needed new people to be around. I needed something different. I was getting kind of bored with uh, real estate overall. You know, I was going through this team process. I had agents, I had assist, uh, an assistant, and honestly, I was just overwhelmed. I wasn't happy anymore. I wasn't making as much money as I thought. It, you know, the money was coming in, but it was leaving just as fast. And I just thought, hey, you know what? I need a change. I'm going to go to a flat fee brokerage and do my own thing. So I disbanded the team, went out, did my own thing, and had my very best year as soon as I moved over to that flat fee brokerage. Once that happened, you know, I uh, was at a spot where I was paying $500 per transaction and that was it. There was no cap, but I just played a, paid a flat fee of 500 bucks each time I closed a deal. And that basically paid for the services that equity gave to me uh, at that time because I didn't need a lot of training. I didn't need mentorship. I didn't need a brokerage that was there to hold my hand through all these deals. So I basically made that change and got to a place where I was just paying 500 bucks, which paid for, you know, them to cover my E&O insurance, to cover my transactions, to cover the dot loop service and to cover, um, you know, basically processing my checks. So I made that change and I was there for about 18 months. Everything was going great. Honestly, I had no intention of ever leaving. I really liked it there. My broker is awesome. He does a lot of work in the investment space and uh, I really enjoyed my time there. However, the uh, latest brokerage that I'm with now is Real Broker. And when I saw this come up, I, I just knew I had to make a change. Basically, they opened up in my state. I had an old uh, agent friend that I used to work with contact me and say, hey, this is opening up in our state. You might be interested. You should look at it. And um, I did. And I knew I knew that I had to join within about uh, two days of looking at it. I looked at it, looked at the model, looked at what they could offer, and I went for it. Now, I am paying a little bit more into the company, but the long-term growth that I'm going to be able to experience at Real is so much higher than I've seen in the past. And so I had to jump in on joining Real Broker. The, the stock options that they offer, the revenue share, the downline, um, and also you know, the agent and client um, focused business was really important to me. At this point in time, I was more focused on like, look, I need to keep as much money in my pocket, but I also want to be able to provide more to my clients. And that's exactly what Real Broker has done for me. They've given me opportunity through being a publicly traded company to earn additional income on top of just what I'm doing from closing real estate deals, but also from helping other agents and helping other clients have a more successful and a more positive um, transaction experience. So that's the reason why I decided uh, decided to join Real Broker. I'm still an individual agent, uh, no assistant. I have a virtual assistant, but that's it. Um, other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm basically in a spot where uh, I've made the change. I went from team to team to being on my own to running my own team to going back to being on my own and kind of just building up a team with a virtual assistant now where it's just me closing real estate. I'm working less but earning more than I have ever before and um, absolutely love it. So guys, I hope this was helpful for you to learn a little bit more about how to choose a real estate brokerage. When it comes to uh, advancing in your real estate career, there's a lot that goes into it. If you have questions, let me know. Drop a comment down below or reach out to me. Uh, my information will be in the description below. You can always reach out to me if you've just got questions. I, I'll just give you a no pressure, um, you know, con I'll have a no pressure conversation with you and just say, hey, here's what I think, uh, given your situation, here's what I, you know, here's what I would do. Um, for me, having been at six different brokerages, I feel like I have a pretty unique perspective on the pros and cons to each brokerage. No brokerage is going to be perfect for anybody. And you may make a decision to change uh, later on. I think as uh, we go forward in time, I think more and more agents are going to realize, look, it's not just about how much I earn uh, by closing real estate deals. It's actually about how much I, what, what opportunities I have to grow for the long term uh, through these other things, kind of like stock options and revenue share that a lot of these companies are now starting to offer. So. Uh, if you're interested in Real Broker, contact me. If you just want to get an information, get some information about uh, what brokerage I would recommend to you, like I said, contact me. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up here on the video if you enjoyed this, and consider sharing it with another agent friend who might be considering making a brokerage change. If you've got somebody you're close to who's kind of in the same boat, saying, "Hey, how I want to make a change, but how do I, you know, where do I get started?" Share this video with them. Maybe it will help them make a decision to make a move to another brokerage and kind of how to how to go through that um, thought process with that. So. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.